Hey guys, welcome back. Hey guys, welcome back. Anyone out there? Hmm. <laughs> Check it out. There's all my pupa that I've just pulled out. And I've got a few mealworms there just to feed off. Um, they're getting a bit too big now. They're going to pupate, so I figured, yeah. The joy of having a mealworm farm, you can um, do this. I'm just going to... So what the plan for today is, we've just basically got a load of stuff going on today. Um, at the minute, I'm just cleaning out the mealworm farm. Getting out all the pupa. I think I'm nearly done. I've been on it for about an hour, but you know, I've got some mealworms there for... The things and yeah, loads of pupa there for the beetles. I'm just basically having a clean out on this. This is for the Northern Exotics brand. Um, this the beetles will be going up on eBay. So if you are looking to breed your own, go and have a look on eBay because I've got loads on there. I'll put the link in the description. But yeah, I think that's about it for these. I can't really see any more. And I don't particularly want to sit there and count all of these. <laughs> There's loads. But what I do, uh, let's have a look at this. Right, now's, now's the game. What's in here is this week's hatching of beetles. This is just this week's. And um, I've already done a clean out this morning, but it was a bit over full, so um, I'll grab it again. All I do with me pupa, that's it. So I can pull these bits out, have a look inside them, see if there's any beetles. Like I said, I've done this one a few times today already. There you go, there's one in there, there's one on the outside. So then just get it into the beetles, give it a flick, and it's done. Same with all of them. Couple of beetles inside that one. As you can tell, a couple on the outsides as well. Have a look at that. That is a white one. Now the score with the white one is that is just come, just pupated. It's just come out of malt. And uh, yeah, so it's just come out of its pupa malt. 
lift this up you can have a look at this first there's a few on there not bad for the third clean out of the day and inside the pupa with no stuff in there and you can still see there's loads of beetles but yeah now i just leave the tissue in there a couple of toilet roll innards shall we say and drop them down grab that drop that on there the beetles obviously if you want to know a video about that, I'll stick a card in the description above sometime throughout the video. Covered it in gaffer tape so it's nice and dark. It does have a black lid on it. And underneath it, just for when they do lay eggs, they just fall straight through the bottom of the mesh. Straight into there. That's me mealworm farm. Oh, wait there. I forgot to put away the pupa. Ah. Da, 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 da. Oh Christ! It's only been here two seconds, and I've already got new beetles. Uh, let's have a look at this. For those again, there's my pupa, and I've literally just this second cleaned that out, and I've got another one there already. But this is me beetles that I've picked out in the last four days. Thousands of them. Well, not thousands, but you get the, you get the point. But the first job of the day is nearly complete. Let me get that out of the way. There's all the pupa I've just pulled out. Well, like two, three, four hundred sort of thing there. Uh, put my tissue back in. So I've got a load of things to do today. Absolute load of things to do. Um, at the minute, I'm just cleaning out. The mealworm farm. Woo. Just getting separating some pupa and stuff stuff like that. I've just found loads more pupa in there. <laughs> Let's get them out while I'm here. Oh that was it, only two. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got loads of things to do today. The list starts, I've got to clean the one of the leopard geckos out because well, the only reason is I think she's ovulating. So I've got to check that if she is ovulating, obviously get her cleaned out. To get her paired up with a male. Um, I've got to put a new thermostat on the Royal Python just because she's on one of those cheap swell reptile ones and they're not very good at all. Um, and that has defective a few times. Um, so yeah, I've got a new microclimate to go on there. I just loads of bits and bobs to do today. I hope you stay in and have a look. Um, I'll quickly run over. I've just been on to eBay this morning. And found somebody somebody dead local selling off four thermostats for a tenner. Pfft, it's stupid not to, so grab a trusty e-cigarette and uh, let's go over and check them out. Now you have to mind the lighting and stuff around today because it's very dull outside to the point where I've even got a UVB strip there. Yep, this is the bag. Let's quickly run through what I picked up. These are all second hand, obviously eBay. Pulse, propor pul pulse proportional. So I'm going to be using that one, providing it works okay and everything, on my Boas Viv. I'm going to stick that on the Boas Viv with um, a heat emitter on it, because at the minute it's on a red light bulb and I don't particularly want that. What's this one? Uh, da, 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 da. B2, Microclimate B2. That's quite an old one, but probe and everything still looks good condition. It's all been tested and passed, but yeah. Uh, pulse proportional again digital pulse so that's just going to be a backup i think what else have i got in this bag of goodies oh, more than i thought what's this one mini stat 100 that come through as well again everything looks perfect on it so that'll be the one that goes onto the royal python uh, because she's on a swell reptile i don't know what this one's going to be like again mini stat 100 but the probe looks to be damaged. Well, <laughs> hey, serpent. Um, yeah, I'm in. I'm in my lad's house at the moment. Well, not my lad's house. I'm in my house. But um, yeah, everyone seems to pick out the fire truck. It's either the fire truck or the Paw Patroller. <laughs> Kids and their toys. 
Hey Levi, I can call you Levi because there's not that many people watching. <laughs> Alright King. But yeah, that I'll start that again. I've just um, I've been on eBay this morning and found someone selling off four thermostats for a tenner. So I thought, yeah, sound. So I've got have a stat pulse proportional, two mini stats 100s. This one doesn't look amazing because the um, thermostat probe's a bit knackered on it. And I've got a B2. However, there is some more stuff in the bag which I didn't account for. Huh. Huh. Ceramic ball holder. Doesn't look amazing. And it's a bit corroded. But hey, I'll try it, see if it works. And a digital thermostat that's broken. <laughs> Why do people want to give me their crap? Yeah, broken thermostat. That's what I've got anyway. Later on today, I'll be putting this one on the Royal Python, because she's on a Swell Reptile one at the minute, and it's not amazing. And um, did, 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 Pulse Proportional, if it works perfectly, I'll stick that on the bower. Yep, there's that bit done. Right then. Here's Millie, anyway. Uh, she's the leopard gecko in here, pets at home special. <coughs> now I think she's ovulating, she's got some weird behaviours going on. So um, I was going to get it cleaned out and um, get all the loose substrate out. And if she is, I'll check if she's ovulating. If she is ovulating, then I'll be pairing her with my normal male I've got upstairs. But let's just have a look and see. Where is she? Where is she? Oh, hello, girl. She's just sat just there. She's just sat just there. Oh, Freshly shed as well. Look at those colours. Freshly shed. If she is ovulating, that would be a perfect scenario. If she'll let me check her. We've got an ovulation. Here you go, girl. I'll get your boyfriend later. So that'll be quite um, entertaining. I'm going to get her cleaned out totally. I'll get a tub to put her in for now. And then I'll get her totally cleaned out, moisten up the moist box, stick some extra hides in there. Um, just if there's two in there, I want more hides in there, basically. And yeah, see how it goes. Six in the morning. Huh. 12.09, yes, 12.09, midday here. <laughs> right, so um, I'm going to start. I'm going to get old, get this all cleaned out, take out some bits and bobs. And check that out, a little hide and a ramp thing me and my little lad made. Lollipop sticks with hot glue. And, ooh, little school thing. Again, I got given that for free because it was broken. I just glued it back together and it was fine. But, uh, mealworm dish. Oh god. I'll be back in a second. I'm just going to go grab a tub to put her in. Sorry about that guys, I'm back now. <laughs> I should have took you up really, but while I was up there, I picked up the mail that she's going to be paired with as well. Good old Paul. Now King Serpent, you're going to know this one as one of the rescues. Do you remember the size of the rescues when we first got them? Look at that. He's absolutely stunning. So yeah, put him down. And I'm going to get through to cleaning out Millie. Now, um, she has got loose substrate in there. Let's get Millie out of there, actually. Put a hide in there for her. No, I won't. It's too big. Come on, girl. And there's Millie. She's the one that's ovulating 
and freshly shed. So uh, it should be, I wonder if we'll get a hook up straight away. I don't know, we'll see. So yeah, just get all of our hides out, all the dishes and bowls, plants. I don't want any loose substrate in there. Um, Do, 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 do. See you later, Serpent's Cave. Thanks for coming in. I've done this at a midday um, sort of time because I knew it would be about the right time for you Americans to get involved. So yeah, anyway, um, just take all the dishes out and get it cleaned out. Oopsie daisy. And <laughs> yeah. How's everyone doing today? How's college going, King? If anyone doesn't know, King Serpent's in college. Uh, he's a bit too young to go into the UK military. He's at 16 at the minute. Just finished school. And so he's joined up the college. It's going well, is it? Is it as good as you expected? Get this going. I'm trying to do this as quick because this is um, the more miserable side of things. I hate this bedding. It's called uh, desert bedding, and it's well, it's very dusty. Ah, oh, gutted, mate. I've always got spares. Always got spares. See a little discount deal on. I think it was um, Pro Rep done it on their website. Five, uh, three bulbs for a fiver. So I've, that'll do me. Went out and got a load of spares. And do you know what? Since I've needed the spares, uh, since I've got the spares, I've never needed them. But yeah, you can guarantee when you haven't got spares, you're going to need them. Oh, someone's at the door. Postman's been, woo, postman's been, live unboxing, there's no need to because it's just a load of boxes, that's it, just a load of boxes, cardboard boxes for when I ship off all the stuff from Northern Exotics, and um, stuff like the Woodlice Culture which will be going up later today, currently got Woodlice on there, not Woodlice, uh, Darkwing Beetles, female worm breeding, they're already there, they're selling quite well, it seems to be going well that does. This is dusty as anything. Check that out. <laughs> so where'd you get your new bulbs from then, King? Sorry if you've chatted while I've not been um, here. I can't really see anything on the screen. Let's have a click on that, see if it works. Wait, there we go. <laughs> Fine, yeah. Uh, that button there. Yeah, 550 each, but... I got four for a five, uh, three for a fiver. So I mean, I can't complain. You've got to know who to go and where to go. Find your little local pet shop and get really friendly with them. Do some free work for them and they'll take you down their little wholesalers. We've got one local to us called um, Dickinson's. And I go there and they're like two pounds 20. Just goes to show you how much the pet shops are actually profiting. I can't wait to put Millie on uh, Bioactive. That'll be after the breeding season now. Give it a minute. Let's give it a clean. How's um, your leopard gecko going, King, with the UV? Have you noticed a decent change with the UVB that, you, that you've just put in? I've never used it, but I am thinking about doing it. I know, I'm pretty certain I'm going to do it actually um, when it goes bioactive because it'll help out the plants as well. And oh, there it is, my brush. Ooh. I wonder if she, she's going to lick it. Honestly, really? 
Have you noticed any difference in their feeding response or anything like that? Because I'm curious on that. Because it is dusty in there, I'm going to give it a spray. Uh, yep. Just a quick spray to uh, dampen it all down. Keeps the dust down and you can wipe it up. Really? What about the Albino you've got? Because you obviously you've got the tinted glass on that Vivarium, haven't you? And um, have you noticed she's coming out a lot more as well? Oh, I hate cleaning up loose substrate when it's when you're taking it out. The worst job in the world. But needs to be doing when you're breeding. So you don't get any loose substrate stuck in the male's hemipenes. Because that's just an expensive vet's bill waiting to happen. I'll watch it after this then. Is it the one um, after your rant video? The drawers are working late. Well, I'll go over and watch that in a bit then. I didn't even know you brought one out. I must have got a notification. But the joys are working late. You never really get to see anything. All right, I think this might be about it. One more quick spray. Should have done this on a time lapse. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just going to drop in some paper towel substrate on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's easy to clean for when they are breeding. Move that out of the way. All right. Spot on. One more wipe along the edge here. I'll show you the burrow in a bit because um, at the minute I've got a um, large wiener thawing out for it. So I'll do a feeding video on it in a bit. Um, not so much a feeding video, but I'll do it live. For those people that like to stay on the live stream for quite a while, it's a little bit of a present for them. If there's anything else you want to see feeding, because I will be doing quite a bit of feeding in a bit. I'll be going through my frogs and whatever. Drop that in there. And what temperature is that on? What's that? So I'll drop that in there. Is there anything you want to see get fed, King? Obviously, you know what animals I've got. Right then. Hot hide. Shall I, st shall I stick the plant in with the breeders? Yeah, why not? Gives them a little something to hide under if they want to. I'll stick the skull in as well. Moist hide. Do you know what? I'm debating it. Because if I am getting a leechy, I'm going to have to wait until Doncaster at June. And um, even then I'm going to get babies and I don't think that Viv is going to be big enough for a life of a lychee. Because a lychee gets the same size as your bearded dragons, near enough. So I'm just moistening up the moist hide. Because it is extremely dry. I don't know, either a lychee, but I was thinking of a whole colony of white tree frogs. Or she was thinking of that. Um, the only problem I've got with that is something she doesn't know. Is when they are calling, when the males are calling ready to breed... God, they're noisy. They're so loud, it's unbelievable. Have a Google on it one day. Um, white tree frogs calling. Oh, it just they sound like. Do you know you got kicked in the nuts when you were at school? Oh, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> I'm not going to be uploading this video just for that. Yeah, that's what I was looking at a communal tank. So I was thinking, um, me blue. Azuria dart frogs along with um, green and owls just because it's, they're, it's going to be totally diurnal Yeah, tree frogs and geckos. I've seen that done before Now I'll make it a bit wetter. I'm still moistening this up Because it was a bit dry shake it all up Newsflash newsflash everyone Diego woke up and come out 
woke up from brumation earlier, come out for a little walk around, and then went back under his log. Yep, stick the moist hide over there. Stick another hide just there. Um, let's have a look. I'll stick this in. It's not a real hide, but I'll stick that just sort of there. I'll stick that one just there. Uh, piece of log, cork, barky stuff. I'll drop that down there somewhere. Right, now, I'm just going to quickly run upstairs into my landing, all my breeder stuff. And just see if I've got anything else I can use as a hide. Because I'm not comfortable putting them both in that tank, in that vivarium. With that little amount of, with those little hides. And yes, I have. Done. Da -da. Da -da -da -da. Yep, that's that one done. Got a few of them. There's the boa. Uh, I'll spin the screen round a little bit. Again, still on the red light bulb, but I've got the thermostat and everything for that now. There he is down there. And obviously, there's his, his wiener thawing out now in the cup of water. Gets a proper girth on that snake now. But yep, um, there's a load of my breeding stuff. Obviously, some of it's downstairs, I've been working on it. Let's see if we can see any baby mealworms. Uh, no, there's some in there, but not today or not at this moment. But yeah, everything seems to be water going quite well up here. We'll come back up when we're feeding the boa up here and I'll just take these couple of hides down. I've just got these hides out of um, the rescue's um, rub. Well, yeah, just got them out of his rub. So let's have a look. Oh, so hot hide there for one of them. Another hot hide there for another one of them. And this is just a couple of holes in the corners and yeah. I'll drop that. Uh, I'll drop that actually. They love it on the hot side up here, so I'll drop another one just there. Um, I'll go over to me mealworms and grab some mealworms. <coughs> Empty the mealworm. Bang! I don't even know why that was up like that, but hey ho. Let's have a look at what's said. Uh, now the 200 special was the one that done down with Peter. <laughs> now the one I done down with Peter, I said thanks for me 200 subs down there. Um, my next big one is going to be my 500 and we'll do a bit of a giveaway and whatever. Calcium pack covered mealworms. Just for playback purposes, this video is going to be uploaded on to uh, as an actual video. So uh, I'm just, the main person I'm speaking to is King Serpent. Um, go check out his animals. He's got a few really nice uh, Pueblo. Uh, he's got a Pueblo milk snake and what's the other milk snake you've got? Clean everything out while I'm here. Albino Honda and Milk Snake, that's the one. Stupid name for a snake, but who would call it a Honda? It must be Mr. Honda and the thought of it or something. I don't know. This mealworm dish is crap, they're all getting out already. Let's get a better one. I'll stick the water bowl. Uh, no, not there. I'll take that hide out and I'll stick this. Further back like that. So I'm still trying to work out how to practically have everything in this tank. Uh, let's stick that kidney. I've got to fill it with water. I'm moving everything around and it's not even full full of water. <laughs> oh, is that country? Huh. I'm twice your age and I didn't even know that. <laughs> Where is this country then? Oh, is it like a locality? The Honduran's a locality. 
I'm not really that good on milk snakes, as you can all probably tell. Right, so that's in, that's in. I'll even stick a little bowl of calcium down there for her. So there, guys. Oh, I couldn't even run you through what I've done, and I'll just spin the camera around. So it's all cleared out, all the loose substrate's gone now. I've got a little cave scully thing down the bottom here. Moist hide over the back corner. Um, another hide there, a couple of hides under there, all the food and water, and a couple of hides on the hot hide, and a bit of cork barky stuff there just to rub up against if they need to shed. Ah, let's spin it around again. There we go. Uh, what new addition are you on about, King? I think I know what you're on about, and I, you're going to be the first person to actually point this out. Go on, which one are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have it. It was a um, Applegate Albino Gopher Snake. I don't have it. Um, when I got it, obviously, when same with like when I get any new animal, it goes into quarantine, and it didn't pass quarantine. There was so much stuff wrong with it. Uh, proper neurological stuff. It had respiratory stuff wrong with it. Um, riddled with mites. That went straight back to the shop. That went straight back to the shop. But now that gopher snake is living in Chester Zoo. It's been looked after and it's cared. It's got a massive enclosure. So I am quite proud I took it back. And we've got Millie back in. Gonna go. She doesn't know what to make, it's all clean. And then we'll drop her boyfriend in. To do this, right, you're gonna have to bear with me guys because ah, I'm gonna try and set the camera up so you can see a bit better. Uh, so you can see their reactions. Oh, Paul. There's Paul going in the hide. And Millie's down here. Anyway, I'm going to keep the camera focused on them. I'm going to set it up a bit better so it might shake around for a little bit. Just while I quickly do a few little bits and bobs. I'll still be talking in the background and everything, so don't leave me just yet. <laughs> uh, let me just get the right angle for these. Uh, that'll do. That'll do. So I'm just setting up my tripod a bit better. And I'll knock it down. There we go. Ah, that side's not been done. That's a lot. There we go. And drop it down a bit there. There we go. So where's Paul gone? He's under here. There he is. Paul. Come here, Millie. Millie! Yeah. I'd like you to be a fanny. Look, Millie, there's Paul. Paul, there's Millie. Hey, look at that sign. Getting there, aren't they, mate? Check out her displays. Let's just hope he's receptive to her. Ooh. Ooh. They're going to start doing a scene from a ghost film in a bit. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping to. Not for anything, any special reason. Um, yeah. But I'm hoping they're gonna. I'm hoping they lock up fairly quick. They might do, they might not do, we shall see. She might just be a bit aggressive. This, just see how it goes. If, I wanna see if there's any signs of aggression or anything like that. He doesn't really look to be paying too much attention to her. She's not going to like this though. He's about to go into her into her hide. Oh. 
but she didn't go and bite his head straight away, which is a bonus. I mean, she is not aggressive. She's just, uh, yeah, but the male hasn't got a full tail, has he, mate? Male is the rescue, the one that's just going into the hide. Go for it, mate. Just do all your research. Don't put, don't pair them together unless the female is ovulating, uh, because otherwise it's just a waste of time and there could be some injuries involved. Don't use any loose substrate at all, because the loose substrate, the male's hemipenes are damp and sticky, a bit like the frog's tongue, and um, it could pick up any loose substrate, take it back into his hemipenal pores, uh, hemipenal pockets, and it could cause infections and stuff like that. I love leopard geckos, I do. Absolutely love them. I was a bit... I was debating whether or not to breed Paul, because he was a rescue. Um, but yeah, he seems to be receptive. Paul's not that receptive. She is. Look at her coming over. She's tail's going again. Wow, look at that. That's some proper breeding activity, that is. <laughs> and he doesn't even know. ta da Dun-dun. There's no food in there except for the mealworm, so they're not going to fight over food or anything. I have no idea how old... Um... Oh, she's smelling him. Are you... Uh... <sighs> He's missing out on the puss, eh? He's part of the puss. Oh, wait, what's she doing? Oh, she's not aggressive because there he is. He's sticking his head out now. Oh, she's, he's having a smile. She's got, she puts it right in his face. And I am absolutely gutted to say, I think they're going into the hide to do it. That there is the female's tail and the male's head. Oh, I think he's got some sort of interest coming. What I'm going to do while they're both in that hide is put another hide, hot hide in there. In the back corner just there. But it looks like they're getting on. Fingers crossed she isn't aggressive in any way, shape or form towards him. It's the first extra leopard gecko. They're just normals, mate. Just normals. I think there's something a bit different with the rescue, but I'm not too sure. I will never know the outcome of what they breed. So they are just, the babies will just get passed on as normals. Uh, but I've already got an outlet for the babies off these two. What the freaking hell is happening in there? Huh. Oh, she's whipping her tail. Oops. Someone got out the wrong side of the bed. Yeah, I, I, I've been breeding for about four or five years, King. So I know what's sort of what's to come. You've seen Donna, my blazing blizzard. She was bred by me. Um, by a different pairing. I've got rid of her dad now. Um, but yeah. See how everything goes with these. Well, I'm going to leave these to it for a bit. I need to clean the glass. <laughs> but I'm still going to be keeping an eye on them for a bit. What, just, what should we go on to next then, guys? First off, uh, I'm just going to... Odd sock day. Woo! Just had to turn the camera around and reset the tripod up a little bit. Um Three. There we go. What should we move on to now? I've got... Right, I know what I'll do. What you want is tangerine um, carrot tails. Hypo tangerine carrot tails. They are amazing. They sell fairly cheap for what they are. They are pretty good. So here's one for you then, King. I took your advice and I started to breed um, Morio worms. If you're from America 
I'm on about um, super worms. But let's just there is a load of tubs there. That's all little cups with worms in. <coughs> um, so I'm going to quickly run through. Well, no, this this is the first time I've opened this tub up. Looked at all these little ones, um, because in theory. I should have a few, not many, I should have a few um, pupa already. And if, if I've got pupa, I can separate them out and all that sort of stuff. Sorry the camera's shaking loads, I'm just resetting the tripod up, trying to get a better angle for you to see this next piece. Which is just there, uh, it's joys of live streams really. <laughs> right then, so I'll drop the camera just there. This is how I've got them, just a tub with a load in. I'll uh, turn the camera around a bit, there we go. As you can see straight away, there's a pupa. Yep, there's a pupa. If it'll focus. There we go. There's a pupa. Compare that to a Moria worm. Yeah, I'm going to take out all the pupa and. I've not just got this tub, I've got a lot of tubs. I've got a shoebox there, that's full, <laughs> and a box of coke that's absolutely full. So let's start with this one. We'll take now, we're going to take out all of the pupa, separate them out, keep all the empty tubs because I'll be going off later to get some. Here's my tub of pupa. I've only got two in there. Oh, look, one, two. A piece of coconut there, just for when they do hatch, they can climb onto it and stuff like that. But where's that first one? There's one. So make place your guesses, see how many we've got in here. Um, I'm just gonna shout if you see any. <laughs> There's another one, and oh god, I've got quite a few. There's three, four, and what I'll do, I'll put this tub aside. As you can tell, right, they are. It's, no, there's another one. God, I've got a few. That is a Moria worm in there. Now, I've got a pinhole in the top there so they can breathe. Just before they're going to pupate, they go circular like that. And obviously that circle gets tighter and tighter and tighter like that one. And then give it about another three days and boom, you end up with a pupa. So yeah, I'm just going to put all of the Moria worms back. I'll keep out. If there is any that's died off, I'll keep them out as well. Um, and then see how many um, pupa we've got. How many pupa do you guys reckon there is altogether? I've got 250 cups with Moria worms separated. Place your bets now. Winner gets a shout out. Hey! There's a couple more. Putting them all back in the tub nicely like that. Could do with some music over this. Boop, 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 boop. See that that one there is a dead one. So that one will get taken out, a new one will get put into there. But all the rest they're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Another dead one. They do leave nasty smells. Um, just don't handle them. It's as simple as that, really. You've all seen my Moria worm breeding farm. Um, it's exactly the same as my mealworm one. On a smaller level, because this is the starting process for me. Well, that one has a bit, a bit, a bit very dead. Um, so in that bunch, I got one, two. Yeah, so in that bunch, I got this many. These ones, these three are deads. That one's already empty, obviously, because I've just moved that one out. But one, two, three. Actually, I'll do it this way. Mealworms are very easy. You can make them as easy as you want. The way I do it is just because I'm doing it on a large scale. Oi! You don't expect to see that. Did you go? Oh, no, you wouldn't have seen that. I have just had a cockroach climbing out of my mealworm tub. 
So I'll have to get that before it goes. It must have escaped from one of my colonies because these live up next to my colonies. Oh god, this one's a big one. Check that out. They're like little aliens. Oh, do your balls hang low? Do you tie them to your toe? Do you tie them in a knot? Do you tie them in a bow? Do you fling them over your shoulder like a regimental soldier? Do your balls hang low? So out of that bunch, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Good old lucky number, 13. Now, let's... They're not so hard, they just need a bit of added heat. I mean, I've got some babies. I'll go show you them in a bit. Um, Looks like I've got a fair few babies, kicking, a few pupa, pupa kicking around here. But this was the tub that the cockroach I've just seen crawling up the top, so... There he is. See him at the back corner. You could be a future stud for me, so... Oh, it's a hisser. I'll get him in a tub. There he is. I'll put him back in the colony a bit later. But... <laughs> I've got so many, look at that. Oh. So, same again. There's the tub. Uh, no, it's not. There's the tub. <laughs> All the actual worms, I'm just going to drop them straight back in. Any pupa, I'm going to keep back out. So this piece, obviously there's more here, so it could get quite tedious. Quite boring. If it does get boring, Kingy, just let me know. And uh, we'll move on to something else. And then I'll come back to this a bit later. Uh, I'm not even counting these. I'm just throwing them in as, as and when I find them. There's another one. Boop, boop. That's the second one I found out of here so far. Uh, but yeah. What's your ideas for any new animals in the future, King? Look at the size of that one. Wow. <laughs> yeah, just going through. Look at that, it's all curled up. He's ready to pupate. He'll pupate in a few days. So what I'll do is I'll just leave them in here and I'll come back in about another week, check it over again, take out any that are pupated. Yeah, check out any that are pupated. And then um, if there is one that's left in there a bit too long and it turns to a beetle, bonus, that'll just go straight into my beetle box. God, I've got so many in here. <laughs> but this is just another step closer. To get in some more. Yeah. He is a beautiful snake king. It really is. Is there any other morphs? Uh, Royal Python morphs you do like? Again, for those Americans, Royal Python is Bull Python. It's not us saying things random. It's you guys. Hey. <laughs> like mine, I've got my super pasta, haven't I? He's in shed at the minute. Poor kid. As soon as the day, the day I went round to feeding him, I noticed he was going blue in his eyes. I thought, do you know what? He's not getting fed until um, he sheds out. And he's coming towards the end of his shed now. But he should be coming off tonight, maybe tomorrow. Whoa, look at the size of that one. Jesus. Hey, I've got a fair few here. I'm proud of this. Hey. And let's just start chucking some more in now. I do like the albino uh, royals as well. Um, just a standard albino royal is just beautiful. I hate the way they shed while they're inside these little tubs. I know they're just getting ready to pupate, but it makes it look like there's two in there. <laughs> Got that one all curled up, ready to go. Get in there. So here we go then, guys. I have got a game for you. Try and work this out. I'm going to show you a magic trick. And believe it or not, don't feel bad if you don't get it. Because I got told it by a three-year-old. And it took me four days to catch on to what it actually was. Right now, think of a number between one and nine. Now add five. 
add two, add three, add seven, take away two, take away the number you first started with, you should be left with 15. Am I correct? Get your calculators out, it's not a problem. <laughs> Okay, quite a few pupa out of this bunch. Uh, so which um, animal blown this bulb earlier, King? King gone. Ah, he's gone to work out the brain teaser, hasn't he? <laughs> so that's uh, that is plus these two little ones, another load, ah, another load of them. Um, oh, I've been putting a few in um, in here while I've been messing around, but yeah. That's all I'll do, just open it, drop it. Why don't you breed your own, mate? Get two normals, male and a female normal, which are het for albino. Because you can't breed two albinos together because they just have so many problems. Now, is it albino or is it albino? This is a bit of a stupid question because no matter what, you're going to try and spell it and they're both going to be spelled exactly the same. Oh, you can go in there. And the last one from this one. Right there. Let's close this down. Ah, uh, what you want is a um, super past alpide. They are absolutely amazing. I found some more. Where's the tub gone? Now, we move on to Coke bottle. Now, you can see there, Moria worms, the date I put them in there. The 30th of the 12th, 2017. And... Who's got worms now? Oh, God. Whoa. So, let's have a look. What can I do here? <coughs> I'll keep filling up me shoebox with all the ones that have fallen proper. <laughs> Pupa. Pupa goes in here. Empty goes in there. Empty goes in there. So, I'm just trying to keep clean as I'm going. So, I'm just putting all the empties in a tub ready to be filled up again. I don't know why, because I could have just counted how many empties I had, and that would have told me how many I've got in total. But hey, oh shit happens. Let's put them all away. With that one there. 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 So when are you going to be going through into the military? When are you going to go through your basic training and everything, King? God, basic training was tough and gruelling. That was really fun. Best memories I've ever got in basic training. Pulling pranks on everybody. <laughs> Even uh, our staff sergeant. Oh, damn it. Where did I put that dubia roach? Or hissing cockroach? I didn't really inspect it. <laughs> There's not that many in this one, to be fair. I'll put them on top of the Bowie's basking bulb and that'll have a blast on that. So what's everyone been up to today? Anything good happening? Oh, God. Ah, everything's falling over.
nearly through it. Most of these are still Morio worms. So at least I've got a damn good idea on how long it takes now. About three weeks in the conditions that I provide for them to turn into pupa. And then, yeah. Normally it takes about three weeks again for them to turn into beetles from pupa. Well, that's just my experience with the ones I've had. Again, in the conditions that I provide for them. I've never had a pupa die yet, which is a bonus, I suppose. It's a good production rate for me. So I'm still trying to stack them in this box here, that's all. <laughs> Just filling up all the little spaces. Look, they're so close. They're really curled up and that one's dead. That one's nearly gone. Again, curled up like mad. I'm not being look so close these are unreal but eh, still just put them down and check them again in a week i've literally not had one out of here yet oh no wait there we go me first oh, i think that's my second one and keep going that one again dead one there it does have a pinhole you can see in the top and that one's been in exactly the same amount of time, and that's perfectly happy. Uh, about there. And find spaces for all of these. Start packing them in the little gaps now. Right, that box there is full. Now, hopefully I've got enough to fill this one. Let's have a look. Well, yeah, I've got, I don't think I've got enough space. Yeah, it's okay if I haven't, I can put them somewhere dark and warm. It's not a problem. Uh... Oh, that was a shame. Only two out of that one, by the looks of things. But yeah, at least that's another job that's been done for today. So yeah, there's the summary. One clean out of the beetles. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got seven dead out of 250. And I've got all those pupa. So that's not the end of the world, is it? I'm happy with those results. Let's um spin it back around. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -ba! And let's move on to something else. Let's have an update on, there's Millie. Oh, I made, made it jump a little bit then. I'd ideally like her to come all the way out the hide so that I can see her body. Yeah, she looks okay. No, no visual marks or damages or anything. Yeah. She's displaying so much breeding behaviour. Look at that going. Put a hide back in. And let's leave them to Make sure the lock's on. Right then. What should we get onto now? There's a long list of stuff to do. Um, do you know what? I'm going to miss all my, missed my rack because that needs to be done. This again is a bit boring. We'll move on to the boa feeding next, I think. After that, well, we'll go check his see if the prey is um, thawed out enough yet. 
it's only been in the water for about half an hour. It's only lukewarm water. But so got to missed all of the stuff there. And the way we do it is Um, the joy with this one, this is me dart frog, me strawberry dart frog breeding the variant. So I'll quickly go around and fill up all the bromeliads and the, everywhere with a bit of water because there is a few tadpoles kicking around in them. I always want to make sure they've got water. And then just set it on a strong mist. And saturates everywhere. At the minute I've got two springtail cultures in there which are being fed um, just in case any froglets are there that's their food. Such a big vivarium you hardly see anything in there anyway animal wise anyway they're always hiding. That's that one done. Up here we've got the blue azurias. I'll feed these in a bit just so you can see them feed. I'm misting them with that arrow water, reverse osmosis water, because that is the best I find to use anyway. This one has just got springtails in it at the minute and Pac-Man frog poo, just because that's what the springtails are feeding on at the minute. And again, I feed off all those springtails. And in this one over here, Pac-Man frog, Phyllis, she's an evil cow. Everybody hates her, even her family. <laughs> she gets pumped a little bit. But again, she's got bromeliad. All these setups are bioactive. And something we don't see a lot of is up there. There's the fatty. I cleaned the glass literally yesterday and just pooed all over it again. Yeah, Madagascan giant day gecko. Absolutely amazing. Yep, they're all going to get misted up as well. Plus as well, she drinks off the glass, so that's probably what she's waiting for now. Let's have a go. Do one side. There we go, she's drinking now. But I'll give her a good soak as well because her substrate's quite dry and she does need a humid environment. Just heat it up and it's middle of the day. Normally I've missed the diesel already today, which I haven't. And then on to Norman, crest again. So I really can't wait to tart this vivarium up again. This will be amazing once it's done. But I've still got to keep the plants alive because I will be reutilising them. Tank. Now, although this is empty and I'm not misting it for the plant, I'm not misting it for any of the animals, still missed it for the plants. I am quite proud of this one, I've done this one quite nice. If I do say so myself. all the misting done. Well I've got this I'll check all the water bottles up here. Yeah that's they're all fine. Right now we'll watch we move on to we'll go and feed the boa now shall we? I'll quickly run upstairs and we'll feed the ah uh, we feeding tongs are downstairs. Sorry the camera's shaking all over the place again. Again um messing around with the tripod getting the legs up and stuff like that. The joy of live streaming Really is the joy of live streaming. But where did I put the feeding tongs? I think they're down here somewhere. Yep, there they are. Whoa. 
Ouais. <coughs> so, let's have a look and see what it's like. Uh, where can I put you guys? I'm going to drop you just there for now. You're not going to stay there, but that's where I'm going to drop you. And the bow is gone from where she was. She'll be out in a minute. But as soon as I drop this wiener in there, she'll come straight back out. <laughs> I can't even get the, the way I thaw out my rodents in quick succession anyway, it's just a tub of warm water in a carrier bag. So I'm hoping it's dry. Doesn't matter if it's not. I just hope it's dry. So if it does hit the floor, it doesn't pick up any bedding or anything, which doesn't really bother it in this much, this one too much. And yes, we have, we have a dry mouse. Oh, hello, matey. High five. Where is the bow? So we're going to feed. But first, I've got to place you guys in a way where you can see. Huh. Let's have a think. Let's turn it around. Obviously, there's the Bowers Viv. Um, if I have the camera, let's open up all that and all that. Again, adjusting the tripod. Stupid thing. Right, so if that's on there, that can't go there. Sorry, this is a trying my hardest to set the tripod up and it's not really working. You know what? I'm just going to hold the camera, I think. And I don't even know where she is. I think she's in a hot hide. But no doubt, as soon as we do the lock, she'll come out and find us. She's not under there, which means she is. Right then, guys, what I'm going to do is Are you ready, guys? So yeah there guys, I'm just going to shut that gently and just leave her to feed. And what I'm going to do now is quickly run into my room and just double check on Cornflake because <gasps> she's shed or is she shedding now? Is she shedding now or has she shed? I would go as far as to say she has just shed today because I checked her literally two hours ago and there was no shed and she was coiled up underneath her hide. There she is. And now she's in there. 
It's got a shed that runs all the way along the back and down the front and everywhere. So let's see if I can get it without getting bitten. <sighs> Don't even mind, that's a big old shed, yeah. Can I have the shed please, mate? Oh. So, first thing to do when you do get a shed is make sure you've closed the vivarium <laughs> and put the lock back on it. So yeah, that was a surprise. I only pulled her out an hour ago and she was still in shed. And there it is. So, try and be quiet-ish up here. Let's turn the camera around again. So if you've ever wondered what to do with a shed, loads of people keep them. Look at that for a shed. <laughs> That's a big old shed. She's a big girl now. Check the eye caps. So you find the head of the shed. <sighs> yeah, and you can see the two eyes. Oh, there's a skin on them. So I've got both the eye caps. Which is great. It means I don't have that's that's similar to leopard geckos with their just stuck shed on their toes. That's what you're gonna look for on snakes. If it'll focus, let's get my face out of it. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Anyway, I've, I kind of want to measure this because that's got to be six foot long. Perfect tail, right up to the face. All right, I'm going to stand there so you can just see. That's how big my corn snake's shed is. Check that out. I wish I knew she was going to shed today because I would have got her a meal prepared as well. But here you go. Right, so while we're up here, because I do want to keep an eye on Boa, she's just taken her meal into her hide. So, um, Reorganise a lot of things. Is King Serpent still here? Because um, while I'm up here, I'll show you me Dubia Colony and the way I work it. The best tip I've got is to keep your area dark for your Dubias anyway. Um, so I'm just organising everything. This is my, I've reversed my camera. That big tub there is my Dubia Colony. Now it's normally blocked off by cardboard, as you can tell by the top. But yeah, so. That's the joy when you've got so much going on, you have to move everything around to get to everything. Let me take the lid off. Whoa! <coughs> right, there you go, I'll reverse the camera around and you can have a look. There is my DB colony. That's in a 82 litre rub. This foam here just stops them from getting out if they do decide to climb, which they never have done, but I still like to keep it there just as added safety. There's the roach chow. That's my personal homemade roach chow. Um, I've got I've done a video on that uh, with a few added ingredients. Now, straight straight up, just for you guys on this live stream, the secret ingredients are used. Now we're an hour and fifteen minutes into this live stream, so I doubt most people are going to watch this far. But the secret ingredients are used in that video. I've shown you the basic base ingredients, and then I put my secret ingredients in. Um, but I never told anybody what, what they were because I sell roach chow on my eBay channel, which I'll put in the description when this is all uploaded and everything. Um, bee pollen, vitamin A or vitamin A, and sweetener. That is it. Bee pollen is amazing because it stocks them up. Oh, someone's just joined. Have you just missed that one? <laughs> right, um, so this is my dubia colony so far obviously we've got my roach chow water crystals they do get um vegetables and stuff like that you see a load of molts on the floor um obviously there's a big male there uh, a few more bits there i'll move this over in a better fashion actually there's a load more See some little babies. 
little babies. There's a load more down there. Now see the heat cable at the bottom, underneath the rack, underneath this. I have one corner, one corner of the Viv. Oh, here we go, guys. That is a Dubia roach shedding its skin. A Dubia roach molting. Wow. More little babies. Now oh, there's that's that's a female and I can't see a male off hand at the moment, but I'll show you one when I do see it. I have never in my life seen a Dubia roach molten as a first. Yeah, I've just got that heat tape, the uh, heat cable down there, that heats it up. So that heat tape, that heat cable runs in a big coil in that back corner and then along all the way underneath all of this sort of stuff because I've got a couple of mealworm breeding farms uh, again mealworm breeding um, Morio worm breeding or super worm breeding Madagascan giant hissing cockroaches um, this is just more wood lice got me um, roaches and all that sort of not me roaches, me locusts up there this is baby uh, Morio worms and down there, I'm going to show that one off in a minute. Let's see how she's shedding. Yep, that's that anyway. I'm, I was going to move it a bit more, but she's shedding. Wow, look a little bit. I'll cover her back up. All the babies there. Nathan, I'll sort it out for you. Um, I'll message you on Facebook and uh, we'll sort some out uh, eventually. It's not going to be just yet because I want to breed these up. and grow, uh, Basically, I want to grow these babies up to be adults so they can start breeding again. But I'll be adding uh, more blood and more skin into this colony soon. Uh, so we'll grow quicker. There's a male just there. Let me get a better view of it. That male there with the wings that span its full length of its body. And there's a few more, a load more there. A couple down there. Yeah. So as you can tell, there's my dubia colony. And the food and stuff I use for it. <coughs> Where's the lid? Where did I put the lid for that? There it is. I'll sort some nymphs and stuff like they will be available uh, soon but i'm just not sure how soon but yeah that's that one sorted baby mealworms can go back on the top over there um that's an empty tub so i'll put that in there anyone want to see me madagascan hissing cockroaches why not while i'm up here i may as well because i do have to check their food i know i think i fed them yesterday but yeah Actually, what I'll do first, let's move that cardboard out, back out of the way. Now, the joy with this one, again, I've covered it in sticky back foam all the way around because Madagascan hissing cockroaches can climb. So I'd always just like to have a look around and, yeah, to have a look around and see if any are getting out. And then I'm doing it one-handed, so that's why my knee's there. Now, these guys do like it a little bit more humid. That's why there's not too much ventilation in the top of this one. But, let's see if I can zoom out. If anybody knows what these little cater where are these little caterpillars are? I may be after some um, plants for me tanks, not just yet, because um, I've got other projects on the go at the moment. There we go, guys. Madagascan giant hissing cockroaches. Whoa. Loads of little babies. Oh God.
She's pregnant. Ha. She's up the duff, up the duff. A few more. See that one down there? That's fresh out of malt. Let's get this up. There you go. Should we see if we can get them to hiss? They are hissers aren't they? at the end of the day. Let's try that big one. Let's just give it a stroke. I got one hiss out of one of them. It's only a young. <laughs> yeah. Giant Madagascan hissing cockroaches. Let's have a look at this one. And loads of babies. Nymphs will be available for these soon for feeders. I wouldn't say soon, I'd say within the next month or two. Black gold. Let's have a look. Look at that. Yeah, that is, again, at the back of here is the heat cable I was on about from before. Drop the lid back on these because they are climbers and I don't want them to get out. Right, now on to, I've got to feed what's in there. But I've got to make space first. Everything's got to come out. Everything's got to go up, go places. Let's enjoy with my roach chow as well. You can use it to gut load your locusts. That's what I use it for anyway, along with everything else anyway. <laughs> now, you can see this is heavily condensated. This is because it is on top. Don't mind this stupid wiring. <laughs> that's, that's how the Viv came when I first got it. But yeah, this is sat on top of there, so it's warm and wet. So it's going to be moist. Hey, Pyro Toad, how's it going, mate? We're just, just to, if you are just joining it, I'm just going to take a look and feed me woodlice culture. But I've just been through me dubia colony, me Madagascar hissing cockroach colony. We've fed the boa. We've done quite a lot already. We have been going, um, we have been going for an oh, hour and 25 minutes. Hour and 25? I'm going to have to pick her up in a bit. Huh. <laughs> yep, there it is. Me wood lice and me springtail culture. Get rid of some of that moisture. Right. So I need to clear it out. And there's a lot of stuff in there. But if you want to see some, these are me tropical grey wood lice. These are going to be available on me um, eBay page rather soon. Look at that. Yeah. They're all over the place. There's loads. There's Springtails and baby wood lice and yeah. See if I'm getting a nice little shot going down this wood. Oh, check out that for some camera action. Woo! But yeah, they'll be going. They'll be available for bioactive setups as cleanup crew or feeders, something along those lines. Um, they have bred enough so far. You can see all the little babies. See the white ones. I'll try and get a good image. Now you can see the little dots anyway. The focus is a bit out. Oh, oh. Yeah, well, those little white ones. More on top of the coconut hide. Let's have a look and see if we can get a real good close up of these. Can I get a close-up? Yeah, well, anyway, all those little white dots. I thought they were springtails at first. But they're not. They're um, baby wood lice. And I feed them off to... Look, there you go. Little baby wood lice. Yeah, I tell you what, for a mobile phone camera, that's quite cool. 
yeah i'll take you downstairs now because we haven't fed the dart frogs yet so we'll go downstairs and do that but yeah these will be available on um ebay and my northern exotics facebook page um within the coming weeks actually maybe even within a week um do, 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 do. yeah i'll just put the lock on the bow as viv because we have fed her i don't want to leave the glass open hey all right let's go downstairs and have a quick glance at the frogs now i do have to feed the frogs um so i'll be feeding fruit flies off to the blue azuria froglets i say froglets they're about nine months old now again you've got to pardon the mess if you do see it we have been filming for a good hour and a half but oh he's on the back glass at the top i see him jump there <laughs> yeah blue azuria's absolutely amazing they are but i'll tell you what uh, what I'll do, what? I'll just sort out some feeding. I've got an old cricket keeper, fruit flies, yeah, and inside this cricket keeper, we've got. Um, loads of vitamins, minerals, the normal stuff you sort of need for your frogs. Um, <laughs> he's sat there waiting for him. Sorry, I've got to hold everything one handed. It's just, there he is, sat there waiting and watching. Where's the other one? Uh, at the back corner over there. Let's just drop him straight in and see what happens. I'll shut them up, let them have a bit of food, then we'll move down here. I don't know if we'll see these, these ones, because they are quite loose. If they are any small, these are my strawberry dart frogs. Me, a fan of Pomilios. I think that's how they pronounce them, I'm not too sure. I can't see one at the moment. We're feeding off a load of springtails at the minute, that's why the two tubs are in there. A couple of cultures of springtails I knocked up. Um, just because I think there is a few tadpoles in there. And not tadpoles, froglets. Let's have a look under the coconut hides. Nope. And there's that one. Nope. Is it down on that one down there? Nope. Uh, sometimes he goes behind that bromeliad up there. Sometimes right deep in the dark depths, all the way down there. He's in there somewhere. I don't know. And then me other frog. Me one and only. Pac-Man Frog! There's Phyllis. Let's have a look. Is there a easily catchable locust around? Yes, there is. Bear with me one second, guys. Because I fed this one. Got ya. I fed the Madagascan giant day gecko um, about three hours ago. She's not touched this locust, so the packy can have it. Ah, you missed it, you douche. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Phyllis, she is great. She won't eat a lot now. I'd normally give her a bit more than that, but she won't eat now because uh, she had a full-size Madagascan giant hissing cockroach only a couple of days ago. Yeah, also on the Northern Exotics, we've got the mealworms coming up soon. Um, so we're sorting that out. What else can I get done today? 
here in the UK, it, do you know what? I don't even know. Um, that's a good point. I better check actually because I've got to, I've got to pick the missus up from work soon. Uh, it's half one in the afternoon. Half one. So the question I've got is: Do I start? The Royal Python or not. I've got a new thermostat to put on there, but she, well, he is in shed at the minute. And he's hungry, so I don't particularly fancy getting bitten. Right, we'll go back down and check out these these two down here. Now, what happened earlier? Well, uh, right at the start, I checked for an ovulation on the leopard geckos. And I've got one that's ovulated, which is Millie, which is over the back corner there. I think she's a bit stuck at the minute. I'll go and give her a hand if she can't get out in a minute. But yeah, check for ovulation. She's ovulating, so we've dropped in her male, her boyfriend. And I'm wondering, why is she sat all the way over there? She... Let me give her a hand. <laughs> Are you okay, girl? Yeah, there's Millie. She's a normal. She's just a normal, nothing special. So and we've put a normal male with with her, uh, Paul. Which knowing Paul, he's probably as fast asleep on the hot hide. Let's go and have a look. See how they're getting on. He's probably taken over. There he is. That's Paul. The story behind Paul is he was a, a rescue. I got him. Ah, uh, he was a year old when I got him, and he weighed twenty grams. He was skinny as anything. He's still quite skittish, but he'll still let you pick him up. Yeah, there you go, mate. Sorry, I was just double checking he was a male. <laughs> yeah, that's Paul and that's Millie over there. They might think that's a lunchbox. It's not. It's a uh, moist hide because obviously she lays eggs and she needs the uh, loose substrate to lay the eggs in. But I don't want loose substrate in the actual vivarium because I don't want anything to get stuck in his hemipene or pouches when he retracts his hemipenes. There she is, she's going in, you can see that. Hello, Polly Wally. Let's just have a quick. I know you're a pansy. There we go. All right, I'm just going to put the hide back there so you can go to sleep now, dude. Go back to sleep and don't bother your girlfriend too much. She'll kick your ass. Right, yep, that's Millie and Paul. Now, up the top, in the next one above, is uh, Mac, the Super Snow. I'll show him. There he is. He's fast asleep. He's, again, he's our male breeder, or one of the male breeders. He's been with about three different females this year so far he's absolutely amazing dead placid fat tail there you go and drop you down there and you can go back to bed now mate there you go straight in his house obviously these are nocturnal creatures so they're not out through the day <laughs> look at Paul down there <laughs> let's see how the blue azurias are getting on with their meal I really need to clean this glass. But this was only just a temporary enclosure for him because it's a bit small. Huh. Looks like they've finished their meal. Crested gecko, again, nocturnal, fast asleep. Pac Man. Right, so what else have I got to do today? Because I've got a long list of stuff. I don't particularly want to do the thermostat today. However, what is the temperature in there? No, I don't need to do a thermostat today. I'll wait till she sheds out to do that. What now? What now? What now? What now? I've done the mealworms. I've done me super worms. Oh, I've got me leaf litter. That's only a dead simple job. So I'll adjust the tripod again and I'll show you through that. Ah. Right. Oh, big TV on the wall. 
So yeah, obviously with the Northern Exotics brand as well, we do a lot of bioactive materials. And with bioactive materials, especially for the dart frogs, comes leaf litter. This is freshly just been prepared and this will be going up as soon as I can find some sort of decent packaging for it. There's just random oak leaves. I've got loads of it. However much you need, I can supply. <laughs> but yeah. That's all ready and done. Ready to get sorted and sent out. It's all been prepared nicely. Um, I've just pulled it out of the freezer so it is still frozen. Yeah, still frozen that is. Um, right, meal worms are done. Let's go on to my list. Because I did make a big list today of everything that I needed to do. Uh, wherever it is. Uh, Pangea. And the ice. Do you know what? I forgot to feed the isopods. While I was upstairs looking at the isopods, I forgot to feed them. Typical. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I've got to do today. Feed me isopods and make up some Pangea. So yeah, I'll get on with that. But then I think that might be about the finish for the live stream. We shall see if anything else crops up. Because we all know when you've got this much, everything crops up. Uh, ah! See, the lights up there is all bro broken. It's because it was thunderstorming earlier. And it was pitch black in here and I, was, I wanted to get some filming done. So I had to tilt the lights so to shine the lights at me. <laughs> Let's turn the camera around. Oh, there's her Pangea dish, so I need to grab that. Hopefully she doesn't bite. Now we can go just there. And then my crested gecko is an awkward one because it's behind that hide up there somewhere. So I just have to go by touch, by feel. There it is. And it again, just a bottle lid. They do both little Pangea. As you can tell, I put the new food in for them, not last night, the night before. There's the Madagascan giant day geckos, and that was full. And that's the crested geckos, and that was full. <laughs> so let's go get some. Andrea. Oh God, I can't count. It depends how you call it, because the Madagascan giant hissing cockroaches, they're going to get made up as they're going to get bred for pets. So are they all my pets now? Because I can't count all them. But I don't know. Let's go. Let's go for a look around and have a look, shall we? Right. We'll start over here. Uh, one, two, three, four. Because there's two in there. Two in there at the minute. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's twelve there. Uh, any more down here? There's 12. Oh, no, 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 no. 13. Baby tarantula that I've just got. So that's 13, my lucky number. And then we go upstairs. Obviously, the boa, 14. Now, this is where it gets complicated because we have. God knows how many isopods, which while I'm here actually I'll feed. Now, some say, what do you feed your isopods? Anything. Literally anything. Uh, the best one. Now, I'm not one, I'm not person for promoting expensive equipment. Because I'm just not. I mean, I started feeding these on fish flakes. Fish pellets. And then every now and then I put some fish flakes in there and they did like it. As soon as I started using Arcadia's Crestonia fuel, they've been breeding like rabbits. Everything's got a lot better. So that's what I feed them, but with a backup of these two as well. So I took a bit more of this in than them and yeah. But this little bag lasts ages. So let's have a go. Drop a couple down there. And I'll break up a couple more, stick them underneath the coconut height because that's where all of them tend to live. There we go. 
as you can tell. And while I'm there, I'll drop in two fish flakes and a tiny, tiny little pinch of powder, a uh, pinch of flake. Just dust it up a bit, just for the babies really. It's a bit easier for them because the adults tend to avoid them. But that is them done. Well, here, yeah, I'll give these a fresh spray. It's nothing like a bit of fresh water. <laughs> Are you King Serpent? Did you get your bulb? The other person we're talking to is uh, Pyro Toad. Um, he's pretty decent. He loves his frogs and stuff like that. So um, you two go and check each other out. <laughs> oh, what's happening here? We <laughs> just um, fed the wood lice there. But we've also got cultures of wood lice. Not wood lice. These are my springtail stuff. These will also be available for northern exotics. Again for froglet food and uh, bioactive cleanup crews and stuff like that. But I'm just gonna go through and I've gotta miss them all and feed them if they need feeding and whatever. These are my two big mother cultures. I'm running out of space. King Serpent, buy me a new house. All right, I'll show you this. Just open one of my mother cultures for my springtails. Now you might think, oh my god, there's a bit of mould. That's left over from the fish food, the fish floating pellets. So I'm not going to feed these because they're going to feed on the mould. Might go, ooh, that's disgusting, but that, that's... Actually needs a spray. So I can give it a spray while I'm here. But yeah, that's me, one of me mother cultures for me springtails. The other one is a bit small, I think, because, oh, done. Ah. I've got a heat mat under there just to accelerate things and had a bit of added, added heat for them, but <laughs> thanks, mate. I really needed the extra cash. <laughs> Don't know if this mother culture is any good. Oh, there's some bits and bobs in there, nothing special though. It's just a starter when I started last week. Yep, that could do with a spray. This is getting hard now. I've got to hold everything with one arm. Yep, that one's done. So, there we go. Wow! There's my second mother culture. Done. Now, time to run through all of these. This is all me springtail cultures. Again, this one, still got a bit of mould in there, so that's what they're feeding on. Uh, so I don't need to do anything with that, but these are highly ventilated, so um, I do need to give them a spray. Is that Ben and Max? Which one is it, Ben, and ben or Max? Right, guys, Ben, King Serpent is here. No grip, no beef. No beef between you, yeah? Not on my stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ben, Ben, we're just going through, doing everything I needed to do today, really. So what we've done today, you, you've come a bit late, really, because we've already fed the boa today. No beef. Ben, you two uh, friends now. Yeah, Ben, you're a bit late, mate, because we've already... Um, there you go, you two are sound then, yeah? Sound, let's get on with it. Um, ben, you're a bit late because we have um, fed the bow already. We've had a look at everything else. King Serpent, I'll quickly run through my dubia colony as well because I think you were gone when we went through that. But at the minute, we've been through all the general gist of everything, um, cleaned out the, um, well, everything really. We've cleaned out two leopard geckos. Um, Millie, our pet's own special, she was ovulating, so she's had a male put in with her. Uh, everything that's getting sold for Northern Exotics has just been kept up on top of. 
all the all the little springtail cultures are getting done and sprayed and fed and stuff like that. I'm just putting them all back now, just running through sp spraying them, and then we're going to go through the Dubia colony again because whoa, I think this one is going to go downstairs and get fed to me. That's going to get fed to me frogs, so I'll quickly spray it. That's still got some food in there. There we go. All this sort of stuff, it'll all be available on my um, Northern Exotics Facebook page. So if you've not already, go over and like that. Just type in Northern Exotics, you'll see it. There's only about 15 people on there at the moment. God, these springtail cultures are boom in another generation and they might be um, ready to go. Yeah, is there anything you really want to collab? That's all I got before the message disappeared off the screen. So, uh, Oh! Right, yeah. What am I stood on? Just stood on a pen. I've got some wood lights in this one, strangely enough. <laughs> but how is it? How's uh, everyone today then? Did you get all your stuff you needed sorted while you were out, King? No, I don't ship to the US just yet. And it's not US of H, US of T, Trump. Oh, no, I don't want to start all that yet. <laughs> I would say Trump's half British, but he's not, he's half Scottish. Yeah, nearly done one more culture and then that's this spray and then I'll run through the dubia colony for King one more time and then can somebody tell me the time in England because I've got to pick her up her indoors up in a bit all right that's that one done that one done that one done let's move all my locusts yeah the isopods will be going and the springtails the isopods will be start to be available um Possibly next week, actually. Um, little tubs at 20. And um, 13.44. Right, I'm off in five minutes. Look, guys. The springtails, whenever they culture up nicely, because I'm using quite a lot of them at the minute. The cultures that I'm making to sell, I'm using them to feed me strawberry dart frogs, strangely enough. I need to sort that out. <laughs> but, yeah. Right, then. Right, King. You missed some fun with the Dubia colony earlier because we saw one of the females molten. 7.45. I think Pyrotoad, you've already seen this. This, So I'll just be quick with this. But this is my Dubia colony anyway. I've got me, my roach chow down there. Water crystals there. Fake plant there because I come with the whole thing. Hey, you bud, how's it going? Yeah, this is. We're just quickly running through my dubia colony again because King Serpent asked me a few questions earlier about it. But yeah, obviously there's a few down there. There's a load more. <laughs> and look, there you go, King. A freshly molted dubia roach. For now it's just growing, yeah. I'm still going to be buying in some new blood and everything like that. But the, the way I heat this up, so obviously I don't know where you guys in the, in the States are from, but we're in England. And currently, it's snowing. Or it is in the northwest anyway. I, I don't know how you heat your enclosure, but mine is done with... Let's get this out of the way. 
Oh, there's another freshly malted one. Under here, underneath all the frass, you can see the heat cable. Now, all that is, it's just coiled up and then it runs alongside all of this. So I've got heat underneath all of this as well. Big coil, it runs to about a quarter of the way across. And yeah, that's it, literally, that is it. It's set up to the thermostat from my Leopard Gecko rack, which is down there. Yeah, we think we think the US as um, Florida and California. Yeah, if you've got any questions on the Dubia colony, I don't mind sharing what I've found out. There's a little baby. Check out that little baby in there. Why oh, there's another little baby up there? <laughs> What temperature is it in Texas now? Dubia colonies are great, absolutely amazing. But this is mine anyway. And then um, I've just done a video on how to make my roach chow, which is down there. Again, <laughs> if you have watched that video and you have wondered what the secret ingredient was that I added, I'll quickly tell you now. This is just a, a sneak pre a sneak peek for this live stream because it is a secret ingredient. I do add it to the roach tail that I sell, um, so I didn't really want to put it on the video and teach you all how to do it and whatever. My roach tail has got bee pollen in it, vitamin A, and sweetener, and they go crazy. As you can tell, perfect colony so far. But yeah. No, they haven't locked yet, mate. They're still running around, um, playing around. I'm not really expecting them to lock. 10 degrees? What's that, Fahrenheit or centigrade? I'm not really expecting the leopard geckos that I put together earlier. I'm not expecting them to lock up until uh, tonight when they're a bit active. I'm kind of hoping they both sleep, get used to the environment that they're in, and then go for it. Fahrenheit, ha oh. <coughs> ha. Right then, guys. I think I'm virtually finished now. I'm just going to clean up the mess that I've made while I've been live streaming because I have been live streaming for nearly two hours now. <laughs> Thanks everyone for tuning in. If you do have any questions on any of the um, live feed and anything from Northern Exotics, if you've not already done so, go over and like the Northern Exotics Facebook page. Uh, nothing's really for sale on there yet, um, but I'll be advertising a lot on there. And uh, yeah, peace out. Have a good one. I'll be live streaming a lot more from now on.